we're on the Microsoft World Map uh, page where you can actually do your uh, flight plan very easily. Scroll over the airport you want, click on it, set as departure, and you'll see it shows up here and it's recommending runway 30. So we're using real-time uh, weather here, so you know that may affect which runways are recommended. So I'm going to go to Toronto and set that as our as, as our arrival. So I'll just delete that temporarily. Click on it again because I'd already done that, but just to show you set it as arrival and it's going to recommend runway 23 so now I'm going to go over and we're going to do an IFR low altitude flight plan and now I'm going to select the runway that they suggested which is 23 okay so probably depending on the winds that's the runway they're actually using today for arrivals from Hamilton so we're going to click fly. So I don't really recommend you change that necessarily. Um, if you're using the uh, Microsoft World Map Flight Planner with real-time weather. Otherwise you might run into some problems with the uh, plane flying the flight plan. You know, that runway just might not be available and it disconnects from the autopilot. I've noticed little glitches if you start uh, changing the runways too much. The aircraft doesn't seem to be able, it gets some confusion involved with what it had originally selected and then what you changed it to. So the first thing we're going to do is check that frequency for that runway and make sure it's correct once uh, Okay, here we are sitting on the runway uh, 30 in Hamilton uh, that we programmed in and we're going to hit ready to fly and we're just going to do a few little things. All the checklist has been completed. The engines are all running and everything's turned on fine. And there's our flight plan right there. So if we scroll out a bit, we can see taking us right into runway 23 in Toronto so let's go control 5 on our keyboard and let's take a look at our rad nav so ILS 23 the frequency is 111.50 now I have noticed sometimes there have been errors in the frequency entered so let's go take a look at flightplandatabase.com bring that up type in the search under tools for the airport code and it'll bring up Toronto Pearson so runway 23 let's take a look at it so there you have the local localizer ILS frequency is 111.50 so that's correct so we're confident about that Let's go back to the plane. So there we go. So we know that that's correct, and, and uh, we don't have to change it. Um, if it if it wasn't, I would select another runway because I found it's very difficult once the it's been programmed in here for this to uh, allow you to change. It just seems to not accept it as invalid. But anyway, we can look at um, you know some of our data from two. Once again, uh, the wind gives you your altitude and the degrees. Um, some of this stuff, is, it's automatically filled in. If you, 
if you really know what you're doing and you want to get more realistic, you can. So I'm just going to click there. And you could change the arrival. If you click on that, you'll get some other options for, uh, for runways. But we're going to leave it with what we have. Runway 23. All right, so there's a few other things I want to do here. I'm just going to um, set the auto throttle on. And uh, our speed is going to be 192 knots. The altitude that's set already is 5,000, so that's okay. That's automatically done for you. I'm going to put on ILS and the, uh, let's just scroll down here for a second and we'll get something. Speed brakes, uh, or the, uh, yes, it's set to, uh, it's set to um, automatically on, okay? It's our our flaps are at uh, position one. Okay, so let's go outside. Everything should be okay now. It's a windy day, so you're going to see here because uh, this is real time weather. The plane is going to be drifting a bit, and I'm going to have to work at controlling it. So it's going to be full throttle for takeoff, and to release the parking brakes, you have to press Control for the key. So you're going to see how that happens. Justin is using my joystick. You want the throttle Over right speed. there on climb Over for speed. the entire flight. Air Canada 777 reset transponder. Squawk 6415. Air Canada 777, you are 800 feet above your assigned altitude. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet altimeter to Niner Decimal 8 Niner. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet Air Canada 777. Air Canada 777 IFR flight plan is cancelled. Radar service terminated. Squawk 1200. Maintain VFR. Frequency change approved. Hamilton Approach Air Canada 777 is type Airbus A20N 4 miles south of Charlie Yankee Alpha Alpha. Request flight following. Air Canada 777 Hamilton approach. Squawk 0526. Squawk 0526 Air Canada 777. Air Canada 777 radar contact 3 miles southeast of Charlie Yankee Alpha Alpha 5000 feet. Altimeter 2 Niner Decimal 8 Niner. Copy Air Canada 777. Hamilton Approach Air Canada 777. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Air Canada 777 Hamilton Approach. Cleared through the Charlie airspace. 
Cleared through Charlie Airspace Air Canada 777. Hamilton approach Air Canada 777 5 miles east of Charlie Yankee Alpha Alpha request IFR to Toronto ready to copy. Air Canada 777 is cleared to Toronto airport as filed. Squawk 0526. Air Canada 777 cleared to Toronto airport as filed. Squawk 0526. Air Canada 777 read back direct. Radar contact 4,900 feet. Altimeter 29 or decimal 89 or turn left heading 035 resume on navigation descend and maintain 4,000 feet. Turn left heading 035 proceed on course descend and maintain 4,000 feet Air Canada 777. Okay, I'll go down to 4,000 feet. Air Canada 777 contact Hamilton departure on 119 or decimal Engage, 7. Engage selected altitude. Should see one one nine or decimal seven for Air Canada seven seven seven. Just gonna zoom in here. Hamilton departure Air Canada seven 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 is at five thousand feet descending four thousand feet. Hundreds or thousands. Air Canada seven 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 Hamilton departure continue as planned. Now when we adjust it, it will go like five thousand feet. Air Canada seven 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 Hamilton departure continue as planned. Squawk zero five two six. Squawk zero five two six. So right now we're on track. Everything seems to be working. And we requested our flight plan be recognized by air traffic control. Oh. I'm going to set uh, the auto brakes to medium. You can put them on max if you want or low. So, so far we're following our flight plan. We're leveling off at 4,000. Our speed looks good. Now, the barometric pressure, uh, you can set it using this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit B and you'll watch these numbers. Okay, so when I hit B on the keyboard, it just reset the barometric pressure to what it is for real-time weather today in Toronto. This is October 6, 2020. Air Canada 777, you are 18 miles south. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 23 approach via Nudic transition. Clear to Nudic. So we just got runway 23. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 23 approach via Nudic transition. Cleared to Nudic Air Canada 777. Air Canada 777 contact approach on 125 decimal 4. Going, going to 125 decimal 4 Air Canada 777. Approach Air Canada 777 4000 feet. Air Canada 777 approach continued to Nudek as planned. 100. Altimeter 29 or decimal 89. So there is Nudek that they're telling we can continue as planned. When we get about here, I'm going to hit the localizer to see if we can pick up the frequency beaming out from that runway and, and it'll keep us right on track. Then I'm going to hit approach hold when we get a little closer, probably around here. Hopefully we pick up the glide slope and land without any glitches in the system. Um, so don't get discouraged if uh, sometimes you're doing everything right and something goes wrong. Because, um, you know, the program's fairly new and there are some bugs in it. And just retry it and, and the second time you're around you might find everything just goes fine. So you can see this was automatically on started so we want that on anyway the engines are all looking good fuel is set right now for uh, just unlimited fuel you can do that in your settings so you don't have to program the amount of fuel for the flight but if you want to do that that's available to you 
this is just a basic tutorial for flying this plane without getting it too complicated. Like I said, the main thing you want to do is make sure that you're on climb here for the entire flight. Once you, once you uh, finish your takeoff, get it back to climb, and then it will work properly, hopefully, over here when you set your uh, altitude and, and engage it. The radio frequency automatically change here. The co-pilot's, uh, you know, programmed uh, to take care of air traffic control, so he kind of looks after this. You could do it yourself, but that gets a little more complicated. So let's just go outside and have a look at things. Coming up to Toronto here. We're at 4,000 feet. Uh, angle of attacks, a little bit of the red zone, so it's pitched up. Our speed's holding nicely. Both engines are looking good. Flaps are up. You know our landing gear is up. And also, taking this exterior view from time to time is not a bad thing. But you might notice that you forgot to bring up your flaps and your landing gear. Or when you're landing, you forgot to you don't have it down. So it allows you to do an exterior checklist. And I have uh, my settings so that these show up, which uh, allows you to fly outside uh, and, and still maintain some idea of what's happening inside the plane. There's our course heading there. So we should be uh, in Toronto, Toronto Island Airport, Lake Ontario, one of the Great Lakes, bordered between Canada and the United States. Our falls is down here, far end of the lake, west end. So we're going to see some landmarks for anybody who's familiar with Toronto realize that this is uh, pretty accurate. There's the Air Canada Center, CN Tower. So it's windy day, and there's your real weather, real time weather for Toronto today. So that is one of the nice things uh, about SIP 2020. Not only are it's the rendering of the terrain nice, but also the weather. So I'm just going to go inside and have a look at things. I'm just using my joystick button to go in and out. So I'm going to back off a bit. And we're still right on track here. Control 1 will bring up the screen. When we get around to about here, I'm going to hit the localizer and hope everything goes well. Hope it picks it up. If you leave that too late, you could run into trouble. And also the same thing with approach hold. So let's have a look at our altitude. And, uh, set that to 3,000 now. They haven't told us, but we know we're going to have a little high here for landing. So I'm going to I'm going to engage that now because they're probably going to ask us shortly anyway. Normally you'd wait for that, but with the bugs in the system. Sometimes they don't tell you. Air Canada 777, you are 300 feet below your assigned altitude. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet altimeter 29 or decimal 88. So I'm just going to, you know, for the Climb sake of Climb and maintain 4,000 feet, Air Canada 777. I'm going to stay at 3,000. Because we're getting so close here to picking up the localizer. So I'm 
I'm gonna put flaps down. Just one. I have to put my landing gear down shortly. So this thing looks like it's trying to level off at 3,000. You can see this little needle here. You have to watch that. Air Canada 777, descend and maintain 3,000 feet. Okay, descend so and maintain 3,000 feet, Air Canada 777. Did give us the instruction. So pretty shortly I'm going to hit this localizer here and hope we pick it up because we're coming right down. See, now it's at 2,500, we're at 3,000, so what that means, I don't know. Barometric pressure, change slightly. So I reset the barometric pressure. On the localizer, I'm gonna hit in a second. And hopefully it picks it up and starts turning. So we should be able to hit that localizer you know, it's following the flight plan right now, but I should be able to hit that localizer now, and it should pick it up. But like I said, don't leave it too late till you get out around here. Now, if the plane continues to turn, we'll know it's picked up the localizer. Okay, so it has. So when I uh, land, I'm going to have to put on the reverse thrust. I'm going to have to take off the auto throttle, cut the speed back to idle. For now, just leave your uh, speed on your joystick where it's at. So at 3,000 feet, we should be able to pick up the uh, glide slope. So we're turning nicely. Or the airport, which is up here somewhere. Or, I don't know if it's over here. A little difficult, we're still quite far away. Okay, once we turn again here, shortly I'm going to uh, hit approach hold. So I'm going to cut the speed back to 180. You should see it go to 180 here. Okay, we're turning again. Right on track, you can see it here. So you can see speed, altitude, and localizer are activated now in autopilot. Here's our diamonds. This should come over and line up when we get lined up with the runway. Starting to come over now. I'm going to hit the approach hold button now. Actually, I'll, I'll wait until this diamond comes on. It should come on. So I'm going to reduce the speed, put the flaps down. Let's take a look to put our landing gear down. So it's windy out there. Now that screen just went off, put on approach hold. So if there's a bug right there. So there's a bug, that shouldn't be going off. Maple 7651 approach, continue to no deck as planned. Altimeter 29 or decimal 87. So let's see if we pick up the glide school. This thing will start to descend if we pick it up.
Tower on 118 so at least outside I can see something. Tower Air Canada 77712 miles northeast inbound ILS runway 2 tree approach. Air Canada 777 Tower. Cleared ILS runway 2 tree approach. Altimeter 29 or decimal 87 wind 219 at 2 tree. Tower Air Canada 777 inbound ILS runway 2 tree approach. Air Canada 777 Tower. Cleared ILS runway 2 tree approach. Altimeter 29 decimal 87 wind 219 at 2 Oh, that's back on. Cleared ILS runway 2 tree approach Air Canada 777. I'm going to set it at uh, 160. Well, 155. Mainly because I can't see what's going on. So we should pick up the glide slope. The autopilot's still working fine. It's almost like we lost some electrical power to that screen. It doesn't look like it's descending or picking up the glide slope. Oh yeah, there it goes. Just picked it up. So our speed's not too bad. I'm just going to leave it at that because that screen screwed up. See if we can land this thing. So, like I said, I have to throw it back to idle, turn off the auto thrust, turn off the autopilot, put reverse thrust on. And the spoilers should come up on their own because they're armed. But if they don't, um, I'm going to hit my spoiler button. Altitude also Clear to really land runway two tree correct. Air Canada. It looks like we're a little lower than two thousand, but we'll see. We might be at two thousand. Not sure how many feet above sea level uh, this airport is. Oh, it will be good. It's coming in nicely. But I'm going to just stay on the outside. Watch this thing land. We've got all our, our things set properly inside. So uh, I'd rather watch what's going on out here through these because I can't see them on the primary screen inside. So the autopilot oh, is uh, adjusting the uh, speed. Nicely, just to maintain 155. Seems to be right on track uh, for the runway. We're looking good, runway 23. So, dep depending on the wind, I think this is the runway that they're actually using today, probably in Toronto. And that's why it's selected, and that's why I recommend that it's probably best to, to stick with it. So you're landing into the wind more or less. So this is looking pretty good, actually. So very shortly, I'm going to be turning off the autopilot and auto thrust and cutting this thing to, uh, to idle. Putting on the reverse thrust. Three hundred. Flaps down. Two hundred. Retard. So I got a little bit of drive. bit of bounce there. Air Canada 777 exit runway when able. 
so the spoilers came on which was good and i put the reverse thrust on you can do that by pressing the f2 on the uh, keyboard but i have it programmed into my uh, i have it programmed into my going to one two one decimal nine or canada seven 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 Okay, so now, if you want to follow me to the uh, gate, uh, you'll see that we could call up catering, ser catering services, fuel, the jetway. So, for some of you, uh, if you've already done all that, just terminate. So, thank you very much for flying. I hope you uh, got some information out of this. Saw a few little bugs that may still be in the program for the. Airbus, but I find the Airbus is a much easier to deal with than the 747, which has real bugs as well. It's real hard to get the audio folks to work on the 747. So let's, uh, for those of you that want to go to the gate, thank you very much for flying with Air Canada. And now we're going to contact ground services. Request the gate. Air Canada 777 Sorry. taxi to Hit the wrong button. I thought that was. I'll, just, I'll redo that. Air Canada 777 taxi to General Aviation parking by a taxi wait hotel to hotel cross runway. Let's see if we can right. change hotel that. Romeo, that would be for smaller aircraft that want to fuel up. Taxi to General Aviation parking using taxi wait hotel to hotel cross runway 15 right hotel golf echo Romeo. Cross runway 15 left Romeo Bravo Sierra Alpha Alpha Kilo Air Canada 777. Thank God we don't have to remember that. Uh, we might be stuck with what we got here. It doesn't seem to want to allow me to, to go. I think because we've already asked that, it's not giving us any more options, so can't do it. But anyway, let's head over. So unfortunately, once you ask for one thing, they don't seem to want to allow you to go to back to plans and uh, select taxi something. Anyway, we'll go to park. If I had to hit taxi to gate, then we would have got uh, our arrows to take us to the gate. Powerful engines on this thing. Canada 7 
This is what happens when he has to go to park by mistake. Oh, it's offering a jetway connection here, so we'll see. I don't know if there'll be a jetway. You know, parking might have actually taken us to a parking gate. the bouncing and the flexing of the wings. A little, a little wide around this guy. to park out here in the middle of nowhere because of security issues. So, anyway, let's see how we do a... Classy? That's not even on the other lines, but that's okay. We'll just follow what they do. This is an area of this model here. So we're not going to be able to get a jetway here. Once you see all the boxes disappear, you know you've done it right. So, um, if we were at the, uh, we get all these options here. Uh, we'd be able to bring over the jetway, some fuel, some power, um, a ramp connection, whatever the heck that is. Let's have a look. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please send a ramp? Oh. Oh, there's a ramp for Air Canada 777, <laughs> no ramp is available. Oh, no ramp's available. But they sent us one. Uh, press ramp connection. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please send a ramp? Air Canada 777, a ramp is on its way. There you go. Pass the second time. So if you're at the gate, you, it'll bring your jetway over the same way. So let's get the baggage guys coming out. Ground here. Air Canada 777, could you please send the baggage? Yeah, Air Canada 777, we don't know where the baggage is. <laughs> Normally they don't say that the baggage comes. In. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please send the baggage? 
Cater. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please send the catering truck? Air Canada 777, we can't send your catering truck. Please retry later. Okay, so the catering truck's there. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please Kinda send cool the catering truck? This is working. So wow. Air Canada 777, so I've never gone to a park and all I've ever done is the uh, to a gate, so this is a little bit of a new experience. So now the catering truck's coming and it's gonna bring the food on. So I guess when you go to parking, it's not there and you come back to the take. So, power supply. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please send a ground power unit? Air Canada 777, a ground power unit is on the road. Okay, so they'll hook up some auxiliary power for us. Uh, let's see. Let's get some fuel. Ground Air Canada 777, could you please send a fuel truck? Air Canada 777, a fuel truck is on the road. Okay. So, fuel truck's going to come, but I don't know. I think I've never seen it before. But. So this automatically gets connected and uh, I guess the passengers are on. So this is something that would happen if there was a security incident at the airport. They would send you to a place here away from everything. And, uh, either the SWAT team comes out or uh, everything is as normal. So we're looking good here, and they hooked up the power supply. It's pretty good. So anyways, folks, thanks very much for joining me on this flight, and I hope you found it interesting and informative.